For a question like this, I would just draw one triangle and make sure that I understand how everything relates because literally everything will be kind of double labeled on this triangle, right? So triangles E, F, G, and J, K, L are congruent. That means that everything about them is the same anyway. So that's good that I have one triangle. I really just want to see it as such. So I tend to draw right triangles, but it doesn't have to be one. Uh, yeah, we are E, F, J, and it corresponds to J, K, L respectively. So uh, yeah, E, F, G, and then J, K, L. The measure of angle E is 45, so that's up here. And the measure of angle F is 20 degrees, so that's down here. And they want to know the measure of angle J. Well, that's up here. And so there's really nothing to be done. We already know that measurement. It's 45. So did I do a lot of work for nothing? Maybe. But the thing is, we don't really know where we're going with the question all the time until we kind of get there. And I have habits that I've put in place after many years of taking the SAT that I know will work and save me from potential mistakes when these questions do get harder. So some of you can get this by just thinking about it and recognizing that if they're asking for a J, they're also asking for E, which they just give us. That's fine. But I do think it's risky. I see people get stuff like this wrong all the time because they're, they're not able to picture things in their brain as confidently as they think. And so I like to draw the picture. It takes three seconds. I am not wasting time. If you run out of time in a math section, trust me, it's not because of stuff like this. It's because of other decisions you're making later. And I think it's because you don't have the strong kinds of habits that you just dive right into like I, uh, like I have, even on the easy ones.